is in the emergency medicine sir so today we are discussing about an young adult while playing football he had complain of sprain and had visited to the ear uh, right now patient a 23 year old male presented with pain and swelling of his right ankle okay. after playing football sir uh, the mechanism of action was when he was playing football when he was trying to stop the goal there was he exerted pressure on an inverted and plantar flexed ankle after 2 to 3 minutes he noticed that there is swelling and he is not able to exert any weight on the same joint right foot okay and regarding the pain he had score of 7 by 10 for which initial management wise we had provided him with an injection pcm sir what is the most important management for an ankle sprain most important will be first will be the uh, relieving the pressure, like uh, rest then mm. ice then compression then uh, 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 giving compression elevation. Elevation. elevation elevation so these are the things that is required so first of all uh, as you said you should be keeping him in the limb should be rested okay. if you have a splint available but where are we are not sure whether it is a fracture or other you apply a splint mm. a simple splint an angle splint so that there will not be any further mobilization apply an ice pack that's the bare right. minimum thing before you give your getting an iv all those things you give this medication and see if and depending upon the pain score you can decide upon the analgesics what you need you can go for an nsaid young best. fellow you can easily give any of the nsaid you can give ketrolac uh, diclofenac or any of the nsaid will be ideal or if there is any allergy go for paracetamol mm-hmm. but uh, that is what routinely that is required so uh, the most important thing what we usually don't do initially is the Yeah. application of a splint and application of ice an ice pack that is the most important initial treatment for yes. any acute limb injury any acute trauma sprain you are suspecting or a fracture also so that has to be done first yes. hmm? so now you said regarding the mechanism of injury so uh, why that mechanism of injury is very important because the structures the involved yes. which are the structures that get involved uh, because of the inversion and the plantar flexion yes. so which are the structures that get involved during this injury whatever he basically, had basically lateral ligament complex is the most commonly involved so can you just tell the structure of the ankle the ligamental structures ligament around structure, the ankle there are three main ligaments mm. supporting the ankle one is the medial ligament and the lateral ligament complex and syndesmosis of between the tibia and fibula medial uh, ligament is the majorly is the deltoid ligament which is very strong ligament uh, very rarely it gets unless if it is uh, eversion it causes by the eversion 2 percentage 3 percentage injury only is there with the deltoid ligament on the other side 85% of times usually it is because of the inversion kind of injury on the ankle and in the complex of lateral ligament we have anterior tibio talofibular mm. posterior talofibular and calcano navicular out of which atfl anterior talofibular is the most commonest which is because it's a weak weak and we can also the mobility is more oh, yeah. uh, when you look see we are easily able to do inversion yes. rather than eversion yes. it is little bigger and it is very easily to slip this way yes. so uh, most commonly injured is the anterior talofibular ligament okay so and what are the associated other uh, uh, we definitely think about sprain and ligament structures what are the other possible injuries that you need to suspect with this injury the injuries it can be like dislocation or the tendon injuries of a peroneal ligament or achilles tendon next it can be fractures of the fifth metatarsal why the, the fracture of the fifth structure. why the fracture of fifth metatarsal locus fifth metatarsal because of per, uh, why it is very common insertion of the tendon and there is can be a pull and there can be a sudden uh, force and it can easily get fracture with the force and the injury together so that is very common what is what are the other named fractures that you no know no snus fracture proximal uh. fibula head fracture is mm. there mm. other than that march uh, march, march fracture march fracture so that is what head of the fifth metatarsal head of the fifth metatarsal right. so these are the common fractures around the angle that you need to look in for then there are other calcaneal fractures all those things are there i am not suspecting a calcaneal fracture so when will you suspect a calcaneal fracture falling from a certain amount of height landing on the ankles that would be and nice. calcaneal fracture and tarsal fracture mid tarsal fractures and all it is very difficult sometime to de- from from an x ray mm-hmm. you might need a ct during that point and we can easily miss an calcaneal fracture so how will you assess the injury by using x ray there is something called less you have discussed this in the previous case i feel there is something called less no, that is that is for the, the angle i am asking regarding calcaneal fracture in x ray okay. there is some angle called less 
sir bowers bowers angle bowers angle and the so the, you have to measure it with the x ray and whether it is any deviation from that x ray then you need to suspect calcaneal okay. fracture because it can be a superimposed fracture which we are unable to see in an x ray so the simple thing you calculate the bowers angle and see whether the ankylation is become acute or an obtuse and depending upon that you can suspect an uh, uh, calcaneal Calcane. fracture so you might need a ct that is the most important thing now coming the back to the angle injury so this exactly. fellow had come 23 year old yes. so we have given him some uh, analgesics and on examination how what are the key things that you need to examine in this patient first is about looking if there is any bruising or swelling look next feeling if there are for the bony tenderness points and also which are the bony tenderness points that you wanted to elicit for first bony tenderness points would be the lateral malleolus and medial malleolus to see if there uh, any fracture tender the tenderness and then fifth uh, head of the fifth metatarsal to be seen sir okay head of the metatarsal very important you need to look in for so any angle injury when they are coming don't just neglect the foot injury if there are any tenderness you have to get an x ray of the foot also so uh, now uh, the patient is there in the er you have started him on analgesic you confirm that mostly there can be gross swelling there yes, can sir. be significant amount of swelling because of sprain itself so the next question arises in our mind who all need an x ray Yes, yes, sir, again, like in the examination, we have special examination tests. But when you are having a pain, I don't prefer you doing any of this examination. Except for you need to look for distal neurovascular, uh, this okay. thing. Okay. You have to look for distal neurovascular because angle dislocation, if there are any further neurovascular compromise that has happened to the distal. But otherwise, all the named tests and all, somebody is in acute pain, you don't do this. Yes. So, it is pretty simple, don't do this. Yes. Don't do uh, all the name test you can keep it aside and you can uh, only two things look at for the bony tenderness at these two points that you have said and if there is a significant bony tenderness and there is a significant swelling and uh, the patient is unable to wait bear you definitely need an x-ray so what is called so the ottawa ankle rule states that we can take an ankle x-ray when there is a tenderness in the lateral malleolus medial malleolus or if patient is unable to bear the weight in the ed at the same time we can take the x-ray of the foot if there is any tenderness in the fifth metatarsal and navicular bone tenderness or unable to bear the weight in the ed these two are the so that is only required in an acute trauma yes. so you don't go for all the special tests for the name to stand out but whenever you are suspecting something else the, uh, you are having not a non-traumatic injury you want to examine then you can do all those investigations but otherwise i don't prefer him doing with the pain you then we depending upon the uh, like clinical findings we di differentiate into first degree second degree and third degree ideally meaning if there is any ligamental tear or not in first degree there is ligamental injury without tear second degree minimal tear third degree there can be uh, more than half or full tear 50% tear or uh, finally 50 greater than 50% in the ligament injury without tear we can ideally see a patient who can mobilize but with pain mild swelling tenderness will be present it is second degree second degree they cannot be able to wear the uh, bear the weight of it and there will be significant swelling and even ecchymosis can also be seen there and uh, even for normal rotatory motion near on the ankle then also they will be complaining of pain in uh, third degree if, if there would be a complete tear then they they might not be complaining of pain per se but at rest at rest more than 50% they will be complaining of severe pain and there will be huge amount of swelling significantly regarding the management any kind of sprain first thing we need to do is uh, take, uh, provide rest ice ice compression ice therapy will be done for first uh, 24 to 48 hours it will be useful next uh, will be compression compression in such a way that arterial flow is not damaged but uh, pulsation should be felt and next elevation if patient slim is getting elevated avoid compression otherwise compression without elevation either of the above. okay x-ray x-ray what all you want x-ray we require three angles ap oblique and mortis kind of a view uh, x-ray you know, the most thing will be an ap uh, lateral and oblique views uh, mortis view uh, maybe also yes but For most commonly a fracture if you suspect ap lateral oblique will be more than sufficient enough but uh, remember that you want to take a foot x-ray also if there is any tenderness. So, don't just think about the angle, just look at the other joint and uh, chances of having him a knee joint injury is also there because of the mechanism. He can have which ligament injury? Which meniscal injury? ACL will be the oh, ACL will be the most injury. injury again the football players again and you can have the lateral collateral ligament so there is a stretch of lateral this is the way you know he is getting fallen yes. down so lateral, lateral collateral, collateral ligament is there then meniscal injury is there so these are all the possibility that you need to suspect so I am just keeping your mind there can be associated this injury but uh, maybe uh, initially uh, he just having an ankle injury but 
also one joint above and one joint below you need to examine so that is a common thing that when you are having an injury one joint above one joint below you need to examine and associated injuries also you need to look in for and x-ray 95 percentage of the time there will not be any obvious fracture when we are suspecting but when you have a significant body tenderness definitely you will get a fracture so uh, you need to look in for you can miss easily miss a lateral malleolar fracture medial malleolar fracture you need to the, the look very meticulously to look for any evidence of fracture whenever you are having bony tenderness. You will have this tenderness over the swelling, but bony tenderness is something different. Whenever you touch, you need to touch over the lateral malleoli. But what will happen is that because during that ailing, the lateral malleoli will not be unable to identify. So that is a little bit of a challenge in this uh, condition. Okay, so uh, what will be the management in an ER? You said rice management. So what will be the best possible management for that uh, any angle sprain coming to the ER? Right. Uh, giving uh, rice and NSAIDs for the... For <coughs> the best will be a posterior slab. Uh, Always uh, go ahead uh, you go ahead with the rice. Uh, you can give initially, but if there is significant swelling, if, unable uh, to wait there and all. Three, if you are suspecting, suspecting it initial is all 48 to 72 hours, we have to require for rest. Early mobilization is usually a uh, principle followed for sprains, uh, treatment of sprains, but here in ankle, because of weight bearing, 48 to 72, 72 hours. hours uh, you need to give a posterior slab, will be ideal. Uh, that's what maybe one week of a posterior slab will heal a sprain much more faster. So, uh, posterior slab, very easy to apply. So, how will you apply a posterior slab? Sir, uh, as it's lower. How many layers you need? Uh, 14 to 14 to 18 layers. 14 to 18 layers. Whenever layers you are doing it for lower limb, it should be above 12. Above Whenever you are doing it for a low, uh, upper limb, 12 uh, layers is okay. Hmm. 14 to 18 layers we will be taking. We will be starting from the below the knee. We will be okay. below the knee. Like the below the popliteal fossa. Below the popliteal fossa. Hmm. Uh, extending till the finger. Toes. Toes, till the toes. Yeah, it should, should be able to move the toes. toes. Uh, because that is very important. We have to assess the toe and also we need to do the pulse check and all those things. So that should be. How will you do? How will you position the patient? Positioning usually we'll ask for the free leaf. Uh, like you are alone. You are alone in a center. Yes, ask him to? Uh, like sit at the edge of the table. so that Ask the patient to prone. prone. And lift the ang knee joint. You don't have any, so he'll be lifting it like this. So you can easily apply a posterior slab. That is the easiest way when you are alone. When you have a person other, he can lift it and you can apply it from behind. But when you are alone, ask him to lift, lie down prone and just keep the leg like this. So this will be in position like this. So you can easily apply a posterior slab without anyone's help. You roll and uh, soft roll and over that you apply your posterior slab and use your roller bandage and fix it up and uh, make sure that you are able to elicit okay. look for the evidence of compartment, compartment syndrome should not develop so it should not be very tight our idea is just for a some time if yes. you have now we have got moldable splints have come so no need to apply pop so you have a moldable splint you can just put a moldable splint and ask him to keep that with him for another uh, four to five days and after that uh, he can remove it and start mobilizing so even with the splint he can walk. walk. If he is able to wear, he can walk. So that is the only difference. So just for some time we are giving rest to that limb. That is a basic Immobilization. idea. Immobilization. Sometimes the problem what can happen, we can miss a fracture. fracture. Some There is a gross swelling and we can miss a fracture and later on the patient is coming back. Even if it is a fracture, what is the treatment? Is posterior slab. Is the posterior slab immobilization. So if you don't have orthopedic facilities available, you are not very sure about uh, whether there is a fracture or not. 50-50, gross swelling. Put a posterior slab and ask them to review with an orthopedician after 48 to 72 hours. So that is the easiest way when you have in doubt. Uh, but majority of the time, uh, posterior slab is very good because the patient recovery will be much more faster. Uh, the initial three to four days you are immobilizing. Otherwise, you are giving them with a the crepe bandage and all those things. They will not be immobilized. And after like 24 hours, the crepe bandage, tightness, everything will lose. And uh, the patient will come back usually. And uh, they will not be satisfied. Even if you give NSIDs and all, uh, the patient will have continued to walk on it. So, uh, when you give a posterior slab, they will get at least three to four days of rest and uh, that limb will be mobilized. Okay. Next, if suppose a patient on arrival has a gross swelling and grade 3 kind of sprain where there is a lot of pain, then we can think of ankle block, giving an ankle block. 
in the ankle block there are basically six nerves which are supplying the uh, ankle block will work for your ankle injury or it whether it will work for your uh, foot, 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 foot foot injury, injury sorry, only it will work and you want to give for ankle you need to go for popliteal block so just can you describe popliteal block will be giving in the popliteal first we will be tracing the popliteal crease and the lateral border will be by the biceps tendon medial will be semi membranous semi tendinous uh, groove of the tendon we will help it but in the triangle 7 cm from the popliteal crease uh, down below we have to instill the local anesthesia local anesthesia okay that will be actually blocking the sciatic nerve part uh, the continuation of the sciatic nerve if suppose there is a saphenous nerve which is coming superficially again if you have to block that when at the level of ankle angle you have to okay anything else that you want to add on so what happened what was the treatment given to him this patient uh, on evaluation on x ray there were no any fracture any significant fracture lines anything seen sir and the patient because he was not able to uh, we- carry his own weight it was advised to give a posterior slab posterior slab was applied 3 to 4 days rest was uh, advised along with the tenesites were given sir okay post evaluation uh, next evaluation next, uh, it was all normal he got better better so that's a simple most common injury in the football injury, injury step while coming down to the stairs they can have twisting of the ankle but x ray again you can be judicious somebody is coming walking to the ed at that i had an ankle sprain mm. and there is no monitorness that is evident that ottawa knee rule ottawa ankle rule is negative oh, yes. and but the majority of the time the patient will not be convinced that you don't need an x ray they will be concerned that there is pain so uh, but these are the guidelines what they suggest if bony tenderness is there unable to weight bear in the ed then you go ahead with an uh, x ray otherwise x ray is not required okay fine thank you